Hey guys, Alfred Montani here, and we are at the Sea Hunter facility. I got Eddie, I got Chris. We're gonna do a full walkthrough. Brand new building, brand new building. Guys, stay tuned. It's a little long, but it's very thorough. QC, I'm gonna be on this in a little bit. Yeah, we'll be up there. We're gonna walk the entire show. We'll walk the entire factory. Guys, this is, no, it's a show. This is a show, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Sea Hunter Compound. Well, wait for it, Alfred Montana. The intro begins now. Wait for it. You, sir, are a man of your word. I'm a man of the people. Oh, really? It's like that? <laughs> Guys, we are here. You, you kept your word, Eddie. Okay. We okay. were at Black Point. You said free beer tomorrow. And you know those signs? that yeah, we'll do a walkthrough this Saturday or whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking, which Saturday? And I try to, I try to hold you on to a date, but we're here at Sea Hunter. And I called you. Yes, yes, you, told, you. You, you, you said, Alfred, come check out. And we are here. And first of all, let me say, wow. I just, wa I just drove around where we're gonna film. And I wanna, I wanna show the factory, because at the boat shows, we walk your boats all the well, time. I think you're the first visitor. Really? You're the, fir you're the first video content visitor okay so let's show okay people want want to buy a boat right right so some people want to buy sea hunters and and a lot of people go to boat shows and sea hunter is one of the boats that people want to see right i've showed them at a haul over very capable very um sought after by the fishing community mm -hmm. uh, you have mono hauls you got cat hauls right but now this <laughs> This game has just changed because of where we're at right now. And tell me where we're exactly where we're at. So we're in our brand new addition to the Sea Hunter compound. This is our new 100,000 square foot addition. Uh, showrooms, sales offices, um, a little bit of everything happening here. We're in the final stages. So it's, nope. a, ch it's a chance for us to show everybody out there a little bit of what's going on in our small world here. This is a big world. <laughs> this is not a small world. Right. All right, so so you're about to get the certificate of uh, occupancy to CO to come Correct. in and, and start moving some boats in here. Right. All right, so here's one thing. I want to walk this because I want the people who are eventually going to buy this boat can see what they can expect when they come to the factory because this is this is going to happen soon. Right. All right, so let's. We don't need to showcase like the, the offices and stuff like that, but I think I think people will get the gist of of. Uh, the new spaces and all that. Well, this, this space has been in some sort of planning production for over five years. So it's nice to finally see it come to fruition. First thing that hit me was really cold AC. Really cold AC. It's actually not the best day uh, out, out here in South Florida, guys. But it, it's, it's, it's been 94, 95. Look, when I was filming at the boat ramp the other day with you, it was, it was in the 90s. Right. I was I was dying. And mosquitoes and horse flies, horse and flies. guys yelling at you and yeah. girls dancing on the boats. <laughs> yes, yes. So so this is a little bit calmer, and here we're standing in our official showroom. So this is an air conditioned uh, indoor facility where I can show a customer his new boat. I can bring customers here and have them climb on a boat that they're looking to purchase while being temperature controlled, climate controlled. And it doesn't matter if the weather's like today, I don't have to cancel. Yeah. I can bring so, them in. So you actually, you don't, you're not at the boat ramp all the time. Cause I always see you at the boat ramp, dude. You're always on a boat. <laughs> I am always on a boat. So, okay. So, you know, we film Sea Hunter coming out of the boat ramp all the time. Right. One of the biggest advantages that you have is not just Black Point, the most famous boat ramp in the world, but how far are you from Black Point? Right, we're three miles away from Black Point. Like, like not even 10 minutes. Right, so the beauty of this location is that we can take a boat to the water at any time. I can take it in morning, midday, late afternoon. I always have access to the water, which, is, which helps us in the final product because we're always testing. Okay, so, so you're gonna be able to show, you can, you can probably put maybe five, 10, 46s here. Right, I can probably put 10 boats inside here and, and you know, we can do our own boat show if we wanted to. If I wanted, if I had, if we ever got to the point where we had availability. Wait, wait for it, let's go. Right, if we, if we ever had to, if we ever got to the point where we had boats to show, 
But even, even listen, we, like treat, an event. we treat our customers that buy used boats the same as we treat the guys that buy new boats. So if I had a boat that came in here on, on trade-in or on, on consignment, I can put the used boat in here and show it and treat the client to, uh, to a real showing, okay. like if it's a brand new delivery. So we're walking into what's going to be now the new production area for Sea Hunter boats. Correct. We're going to walk into the main floor here. Okay. This new facility is going to allow us to have anywhere from 60 to 90 boats on the floor at one time. 60 to 90 boats? Wow, guys, wait for it. Let's see what we got here. Oh my goodness. All right. So, <laughs> I feel like I'm at like an Amazon facility warehouse here. Right. Uh, guys, I don't know if my camera does justice to how big this place is. Right. All right. So let's try to do a quick rundown because we're going to walk the main building now. We're going right. to get to the main building. We're going to show how they're being built. You know, some of the advantages of having a sea hunter, right? And we can talk about all that. Let's, let's kind of like visualize exactly what's going to be where in this area. So, and that, and that I think the evolution of when things are start happening, it might even change as well. So this area we're in right now is going to be our small parts. It's small parts. Be consoles, hard tops, uh, leaning posts, basic assembly of the smaller parts so that when we install them on the, on the final product, it's a cleaner installation. Okay, so obviously they're, they're the construction company is still cleaning the floors here. You guys got polished floors in here? Polished floors, we're gonna have our own NBA uh, 2K Live video game going here. <laughs> we're gonna have a big party when this thing opens, so I gotta make sure the dance floor and the disco ball is out. All, all right, so how, how many square feet is this? Is this uh, over 100,000 square feet? It's, it's just shy of 100,000 square feet. Um, if you look down this aisleway, you're going to see three very large doors on the south side of the building and three very large doors on the north side of the building. And the goal is to have boats come in from the original factory floor in pre-assembly status and flow through a true assembly line and be ready to leave out these doors and head to the water okay so eventually the boats will be coming out of here correct and then you know i met chris at the boat ramp right one time right he's hard to film because he i waste his sd card but i got him one time filming and he was alone on like a 38 footer or something like that and he and he brought it in and out by himself and i, I he, he's too good of a captain but, but we'll we're, see. We're, we're professionals. Yeah, uh, well, professionals. I'll, I'll see. I'll see. I'll see him a little Extreme later. Extreme professionalism uh, here. Uh, okay, so so we'll see him a little later. Right. Um, so then Chris will get once this boat is done, it leaves the door. He does QC slash a little bit of everything, and uh, it'll go to the water. Right. Right. When if it's not you, it'll be him, and then they have like an orientation with the customer and, and show the customer. Correct. It'll go, it'll go, but typically we test our boats two to three times. We try to put the first eight to ten hours on the boats. So it'll go to the water. Keep in mind, we also have our own private marina in Key Largo, so we can take the boats to the marina in Key Largo for uh, delivery check. Which is a big marina. Correct. Right? And I just found out that behind the scenes, they're opening up a restaurant next door, Right. which is going to be right. pretty so, cool. So when I say Sea Hunter Compound, we have this addition, we have our previous facility, we have the additional facility where we have our basic, our tent city, and then we have the marina in Key Largo, which is our own five acre getaway with our boats, and then we're, we're expanding that as well. So one of the things that I, I like to tell people is when you buy a boat, you're kind of buying into the family of the boat, right? right. And so we've been big on that. We've been family style, trying to keep our small business feel, right? A lot of times I sell a boat to a client a year and a half or two years before their boat starts production, I get to develop a relationship with this client in a way that very few dealers get to do it. If a boat's already sitting on the floor, the customer walks in, he picks a color, throws some electronics in it, and he's out the door in three days. Our build process and our sales process is very different. We are a long-term build, we're a long-term relationship, 
and hopefully and usually the goal is to have service be the reason why people are buying the boat from us. Are you going to have a service a facility within the Sea Hunter? Yes, um, we will. Now, all of our service is currently handled at the uh, service facility in Largo, at okay. the marina. However, we will have our service facility here in Miami, in Homestead, opened once stuff moves in here. Okay, so I see some partitions here from the main, the main line here. What do we got going on in this area right here, that where this, uh, these walls are? Because I kind of want to give them a visualization. You obviously, you're going to be able to pull molds and stuff like that here. Right, so inside this enclosed area is where we're going to do our mold maintenance. Uh, we're going to do tooling for new product, right? One of the things I've always loved about Sea Hunter is that they're always trying to revolutionize or reinvent what the idea of boating in South Florida is. When I first joined them, we were one of the first manufacturers that had a 35 and a 40 foot center console uh, in production, right? And very few people knew about the Sea Hunter 40 when I met Ralph and Sea Hunter Boats. But, Ralph being the owner. Right, Ralph being the owner. So we had a 40 foot center console that was pro a prominent in the South Florida community, but outside of South Florida, very few people saw that boat. But it's always been his style to, to try new things, right? To, to tinker, to try to be on the leading edge. So this area is where Ralph and the engineers can tinker. They can build new molds. They can work on existing molds. They can continuously reinvent. So, so wait a second. So I already see a massive machine that's already in here. Right. This, so is, our, this is our five axis router. So currently, when we design new product, when we design a new, uh, design a new console, we design a new leaning post, design a new hardtop, design an entire new boat, this five axis router cuts the original framing for that new product out of uh, foam and, uh, and plywood. And then we create basically what looks like a, a skeleton and, and build our new boats. Man, this area right here is massive just for this. This area is as big as most factories in South Florida. All, all right, so when, when did Sea Hunter, when was it founded? So Sea Hunter started in 2002. Okay. Uh, in 2004, they opened the new or the original facility. Um, and when we started in 2004, we were building small boats, 18 footers, 22 footers, 24 footers. Uh, we, we eventually got a 29 and a 35, and then that led to the 40. But really, it was a small 35, it was a small 29, and it was a small 40 compared to today's standards. Um, everything is much larger now. So, okay, so right now we're about, we're, we're getting close to to the production facility that you guys have been building all these amazing boats Correct. that we've been seeing at the shows because we've done i've done i've done videos with autumn i always give her a hard time right at the shows and i give you guys a hard time at black point so we're about to get there here what is going to be what's going to happen here caged <coughs> off this area here so this cage area here is our parts room this is essentially about 10 times bigger than our current parts room so as we've all seen in the last three years, parts availability, whether it's pumps or lights or motors or steering or whatever imaginary part that comes up in the future builds, uh, it's been hard to get. Our goal is to stock a year's worth of parts so that we can overcome the fluctuation of parts accessibility. And we'll talk about that in the production because right, right now you guys have had what you got, you got called 10 city, right? Right. You got, you like, like, like Tesla had a, a 10 city. And Elon Musk was able to, you know, build cars out of these tents, right? Right. Now, once that happens, are, are those tents going to go away once once you have this so completely open? So I think 10 cities, 10 cities is what we're going to turn into our service center in Miami. Okay. So we're going to leave 10 City up. And and basically, it's a it's a great uh, space for us to work in. Mm -hmm. And it really helped us in, in the last three years during the slowdown of parts availability. There's and more, you, more, more you rooms in here? This is into the uh, weld room. So we build our own towers, we build our own hardtop frames, we build our own handrails, we build all of our own metal parts. Uh, our current facility for metal parts is, 
it's maybe a thousand square feet. So this is about 10 times that. And it's under AC, by the way. Under AC, yeah. nice height here so we can build some taller towers. Yeah, I, listen, if, if, you guys, if you guys get a tower that high, I want to film it. Right. I want to film that, that build. All right, well, so everything welding will be here. Right. I mean, we invested, we invested in not only in the machinery to have our own weld shop, but the most important part is the labor and the people, right? So we have four great welders that work full time for us currently in this space with the goal to get production closer to 100 boats a year. That's our goal. Our goal is 100 boats a year. Currently, we're sitting about 50 to 60 boats a year. So, so 100 boats is, is manageable for us. And, and this will give more space for us to, to keep up. So, okay, so, so let's talk about that real quick. Let's go over here because now, we're, now we're, we're crossing over. So that's a very important question that people have. If I buy, you know, a Sea Hunter 46, how long is it gonna take me? And having a facility like this, now that's gonna reduce the time of the build because you can actually have the space to produce. Right. And you're dealing with some challenges now because Let's be real here, right? COVID was the best salesman for all of boating. Right. Now, so, I would say we got probably 50% more demand, and at the same time, we got 50% less supplies. So space hasn't necessarily been the reason why production is slow. It's been parts. Hopefully that is overcome in the next year or two, and, and we have the space ready for it. Okay. But definitely, and, and I'm sure you could talk to a lot of the sea hunter owners that took delivery of boats in the last two or three years, it's definitely slowed down and and thank god our plus our clients are loyal and and patient so so it, it's still taking many manufacturers several years depending right. on the boat to get a boat once you give a deposit right right um because of the backlog and, and there's a queue system right you gave a deposit a year and a half ago your boat might be on the line right now right so okay so let's walk to this Ooh, we facility got a, now we got a window here where there's no rain yeah, we, I think, I think we, uh, all right. So right now, this, this, this door that's open here is what? No, 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 not, not, not the new building, the, the, the existing building where you guys are producing. So that door right there is where product that's close to delivery is coming out of the factory and QC will take over. Which is Chris. Right. Okay. Uh, well, QC means quality control. Right, quality control. So but 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 Chris is, is kind of taking care of all that. Right. So Captain Chris handles the sea trials, punch list. The boat moves down to our facility in Key Largo, where we have Mark Berta, uh, our service manager, who handles uh, additional QC items and punch lists and make sure that the boats are punched out. We'll run here while the rain starts to fall on us. All right. So I immediately already see a giant cat that looks like it's out, coming outside of the door. Right. Is this boat, is this boat already ready to, to come out? So this boat will be out Thursday. And when I saw you, oh, that's I what saw you told you at me. the ramp, I said, listen, yeah. meet me here Thursday. All right. Thursday, we're gonna put this boat okay, in the water. So wait a second. So, so I'm lucky enough, I'm lucky enough to have a sea trial possibly, maybe? Yeah. It's gonna happen then. Yeah. It's okay. Happen. So this is the cat. Obviously, we have some motor hauls behind us as well. This is where right now all the boats are leaving. Right. Let's pause the video and start from the front where the process begins and right. show. I'll take you through the factory the way I would take a, a regular client. Oh, okay, guys, ready? Alpha monitor, guys. You have not taken me on the boat yet, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I, guys, you have to watch the chit show. If you don't watch the chit show, you won't. You won't get it, guys. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see inside that one. Half a month in there, guys. Let's go. Wait for it. All right, all right, all right. So we're back. We're back, Eddie. And one of the first things that most people remember, a marketing uh, genius moment the Sea Hunter had. You guys got a boat and you cut it in half. Right. We dropped it from a crane and then we cut it in half. You had to add, you dropped it from a crane right, first. Right, so, so we knew that Boston Whaler had built uh, a boat that they cut in half and showed it floating. And we knew that we built an unsinkable center console. So we wanted to one up that video. Um, we took a 35 footer, brand new off the line. Uh, wow. Rig rigged it 
right? Rigged it completely so that we knew we were gonna trash a $250,000 boat. Wow. Uh, then we put it up in the crane 25 feet in the air. We built, and I'm gonna give a shout out to Joe Malazzo wherever he is because he engineered this amazing contraption that on the pull of a string would release uh, a 10,000 pound center console off of the crane and let it drop down on the concrete. Would you have some of that footage still? Maybe Ralph yeah, it's has online. it? It's online. It's, it's online. It's okay. online. Okay, maybe we can show it. So, so we dropped the boat 25 feet, it bounced on the concrete, we put the engines on it, cut it in half, it took, uh, it took the guys about six hours to cut it in half. Uh, they used a, a large, basically like a, what you would see a firefighter use to cut a car in half, a okay. large saw, a circular saw. And uh, the Kevlar was what made it hard for them to, they, they, were, they must have gone through 30 saws, saw blades. And uh, eventually they got it in half, we put it in the water, and to this day, that boat still runs around half a boat. Isn't it's, that boat in, uh, in the Key Largo Marina? Yeah, we have it up high on a, on a display in Key Largo, and we run it at boat shows. Actually, we used to run it at the Miami Boat Show until they started yelling at us because people wanted to come and get on the boat. So we would go from dock to dock and pe pick people up in this half sea trails, <laughs> and we would take them to our we would take them to our sea hunter display. It was almost like our own uh, our own chicho. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was, it was our own ferry. Like, oh, yeah. you're you're at you're at dock A. Oh, okay. You pile wow. onto the boat and we'll bring you over. And and they you know they they put an end to that. But we still run that boat around for marketing, and it did what it needed to do. It showed what we build, and we still build that today, right? So we build what we call the safest boat on the water, right? We built a Kevlar reinforced, foam filled, big, beefy center console that's all about safety. So, you know, I got some footage, some pretty nasty footage, and I have to look for it, of you guys ripping haul over. Right. I always tell people, if you can rip haul over on a rough day, which is a haul over is one of the scariest, craziest inlets in all right. of the world. And uh, your fishing guys, uh, which, which are many people uh, on the fishing side, right? There's there's obviously people that use it for family, but the diehard fishing guys are fishing off of these cats and monohauls, ripping, you know, haul over with how you guys are building the boat. And we're gonna see that now. So when they come in here, this is the, the facility that you guys are working in at the moment, right? right? So since 2004, we have been working out of this facility. This is our main uh, production building. Come on in and we'll walk the hall. What's, what's the bell for, Eddie? What's the what, the bell? We ring this bell when VIPs and celebrities arrive with their cameras. Oh, I broke it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, did you guys set that up for me to do that? Well, maybe you're not VIP enough. Oh, maybe, the cheap maybe shot. Maybe you're not celebrity enough to All ring right. the bell properly. All right, guys. So I, I broke the bell. All right. So so these are, these are executive hello. offices. We got Megan in there. She's super VIP. Somewhere in here is Issa. She's even more VIP. All right, so we just walked in to production. Right, we're like right into production, right? So this is basically about 40,000 square feet, total building space. Keep in mind- like 40,000 square feet, just right. to put context. This area visually looks almost like similar size as what the welding guys are right, gonna, right so just to put context because a lot of people are not going to see that um i already see that we have some consoles or what, what, are, what are these here so these are bilge boxes okay bilge pre boxes prepared and, and keep in mind with limited space we've got parts and we've got assembly throughout this entire building right there may be a motor in the mold room there may be uh, boxes in the assembly room, there may be Joko in the parts room. We are utilizing every inch of space in this building. Okay, so I, I see you have here, what is this, a cat right here? What yeah. do we got, 41? 41 foot catamaran, and we build, people always ask, what is the ratio of V bottoms to catamaran? It's about 60-40. 60, 60 V bottom, 40 catamaran. And part of that is, much harder to build the catamarans right now, right? Hard to get a set of four engines, hard to get a steering set for four engines, hard to get uh, four, you know, two 400 gallon aluminum, quarter inch aluminum fuel tanks. So, so in the slowdown of parts and accessibility to raw materials, 
the catamarans have suffered a little bit because they take the most parts. Now, step haul cats. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the design and the evolution of this space because when you were telling me, you guys started off with an 18-footer. Right. This was originally, <laughs> this was originally constructed to build uh, an 18-foot flats boat, two bay boats, and two center consoles. The biggest being the 40, which had the length, but it was a smaller 40. That, now, four, that 40 was a hit when it right. came out. A lot of people, uh, and those, those boats are still on the water now. Yeah, in fact, they've gained so much popularity recently that to this day, 15-year-old boats are selling for more than what they sold new. So, Which is crazy. So those boats are doing great on the water. We, we're at about 850 boats total in the history of the company on the water, and almost all of them are still on the water. I, can, I, I still track boats that were built in 2004. Primarily all in America? Most primarily. Of them? primarily. I, I, would say, I would say we have two dozen boats outside of the United States, and, and I would say 75% of our production is Palm Beach down to Key West. Wow. Because people know them and right. they and they, they just come over here to the yeah, factory. We were, we were like a very local builder. We were we we did zero advertising. You never saw a sea hunter ad in a magazine. You never saw a sea hunter ad in a, on a fishing show. We didn't spend a lot of money on PR. Right? We were word of mouth. Yeah. If you loved your boat, you told your friends and your friends bought boats. And we still are kind of like. What that. model hall is this here? So this is a new project, right? This is a brand new. 45 center console that'll be coming to the water so, again listen so, so nobody knows so nothing listen, about this so hold listen. on a second wait 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 wait, Here, wait, wait so are we breaking news right now here's the shit show <laughs> there you go first, first content all right. Right. all right so we have a 45 so, model hall right this this is the new 45 model hall we've always had a beautiful 45 foot center console quad engine nice cabin it, it was a very simple yet very very popular boat for us mm -hmm. this is the replacement for that boat to, to accommodate bigger horsepower to give us a little bit more room in the cabin to give us standard dual row seating that everybody wants so we'll do listen we'll do hall, hall, hall number one this is hall number one we'll oh do oh my goodness uh, uh wow what a day a show and tell when that gets ready to go and hopefully that is Fort Lauderdale boat show of this year. Okay, debut. so we gotta work. So this is a 41 cat. Correct. And you also have a 46. And we have a 46. So 41 and a 46. And we have a 38 also. Which is the one that which you is, which is were the one I was at, running around in, when in, you in, in the, at Black Point the other Right. Day, which is a monster as well. Yeah, because amazing, that's amazing, yeah. amazing boat. But what happens now is with the limited availability to engines and, and parts, we have to pick what boats we're going to build, you know, based on availability of motors. So you're juggling production and people based on the production of the things that you have. Right. So what's, That's happening, crazy. what's happening right now is the smaller boats are suffering, right? Wow. If we have the ability to build a triple engine boat or a quad engine boat, we usually start big down to small. And I think it's happening industry wide. You're going to yeah. see you're going to see the big boats continue to go out and the small boats the are limited suffering. numbers okay so i see that you do have some some uh, motors or and some right things trickling in right, right. which, which so, is which is welcome so they're arriving right they're starting to arrive we're starting to see a transition where there were just no availability of parts to a to a transition of now stuff starting to show up right so here you see yamaha lower units showing up Yamaha Motors showing up, Suzuki, thank God for Suzuki. In the last six to eight months, they stepped up and got us motors. So, you know, at one point where we had no motors in the shop and we were waiting, now we have motors and, we're, and they are waiting for the boats to finish. So look, I see here you have the deck, right? Right. Give them the, the term, the cap. the cap. The cap. And we're, you have we're a three-piece boat, right? Okay. So you have the cap, which is just the ring, mm -hmm. right? It's the covering board where the uh, rod holders go. Then you have the deck, mm -hmm. which is what we stand on. It's yep. the floor of the boat, and then we have, we have the hull, three pieces. Okay. Yeah, because some people don't know. Now, can I? Can I? Because you use a combination of, of uh, fiberglass and Kevlar, right? Which is kind of very unique. Not not many manufacturers or production boats will use something like that. So look, right here, I'm I'm showing how right. how thick is that transom there? So the transom is on. Um, this is a 35 footer. This is 
a five to six inch thick transom and probably a four inch stringer with multiple stringers going lateral and diagonal uh, across the entire uh, structure. You've got a boat that uses minimum two layers of Kevlar, but they overlap, especially in high stress areas. So when we take a cutout from the water pickup or from a drain area and the hull bottom, you'll get a part that looks like it has 10 to 12 layers of Kevlar. For those high impact moments. Anywhere where there's extra strength. And we use the Kevlar for strength, right? We're not, using, we're not trying to get lighter. Uh, the contrary, this 35 footer is probably one of the heaviest 35 footers on the market. But Kevlar is lighter. But it Kevlar, makes both lighter. Kevlar so Kevlar is lighter. But it's stronger too. Right. And, it, and it's 10 times more expensive. Right. Basically, I, I want resistance to anything puncturing the hull. For those right. moments impact, you're coming. Impact resistance. Listen, I love my, I love my customers. But half of them have trouble driving out of the uh, inlet in a straight line. Half of them occasionally will meet a marker or two, and I build a boat to uh, to make that meeting less okay. less hurtful. All right. So so definitely that's that's kind of like why you guys dropped that one boat from the beginning right. of the video. All right. So the all right. This boat is already coming down the line. Um, they look already almost ready to. Right. to start rigging and do all that good stuff like they got the engines on and here you see listen we have a suzuki boat a mercury boat a yamaha boat another yamaha boat and another yamaha boat typically we're 50 50 with mercury and yamaha yamaha has been very difficult to get motors from in the last year and a half suzuki has filled a lot of that void uh, especially on the on the smaller boats but we recently delivered now we delivered a 38 catamaran with quad Suzuki's. I've got a 41 coming down the line with quad Suzuki's. So, so people, especially since Yamaha and Mercury both have a 300 and then a four something, mm -hmm. Suzuki has a 350 that, fit, that fills that gap, right? It's, it's a middle motor that, and, and it's the right price point. It's the right power. Suzuki's are good boats. motors. They're gonna take a lot of market share here shortly. All right, so so let's walk into the mold room, all right, and we'll talk a little bit about where the boats start. We'll look at the molds, the flow of the boats into this building, and some of the obstacles that us as a builder have to overcome to build the boats. So these are small parts right now that they're going to start working on here? Right. He, this gentleman is finishing our hatches. Our hatches are carbon fiber. Right? Wow. It would be a lot simpler and a lot more cost effective to build this hatch out of all fiberglass, but the carbon fiber is stronger. Mm -hmm. It's lighter, so I can build a very large hatch, and if it falls on your feet, it's not gonna take your toes off. And uh, it's very strong as well. It's beautiful, and it has basically been one of our calling cards, so we don't wanna get rid of it. Let me show, permiso caballero. Look at this. So, at what point right now he's sanding and polishing here? What's going on here? Yeah, like, all, all the small parts that need finish work, sanding, polishing, they'll come in various stages. This is basically hatches and, and, uh, and tables. All right, guys, let's go. Ooh. So things just, I can, I can smell Right. the resin right. so tell me a little bit about the resins right, right. when so, you're building because that's super important because of the lamination issues if you're not using good resins what's going to happen right. we use a vinyl ester resin even when resin was difficult to get uh you know the 2001 2000 there was a shortage of resins um we didn't go to a cheaper resin we went we stayed with our vinyl ester resin we slowed production to wait for vinyl ester resin the kevlar we're using kevlar throughout the boat and I say Kevlar, that's a proprietary term to uh, DuPont. Okay. Right? It's, it's an air mid fabric, although we are buying DuPont Kevlar. Okay. Okay, so. All right, so. I'll, I'll continue to use that word, but from here on out, we'll understand that it is true DuPont material. All right, so I, I see good news here. There's actually motors. Motors. 
which is kind of what has thrown the production off somewhat. And, and, and the fact that you guys don't have uh, enough space, right. which, which now the new facility is going to fix. Right. All right, so what are we looking at right here? What, what hole is this? So this is the 38 catamaran. 38. That's 38. the one that you were at Black right. Point. Right. So what I want you to notice on this is the amount of Kevlar that we are using, right? When people say, how much Kevlar do they use? You can see it is rub rail to rub rail, overlapping. And the Kevlar several, would be the gold so for, the for those people who don't know. This is, this is Kevlar gold right here. All right, guys. Okay. So, so you see here, now you, you have a mixture of fiberglass. Right. Now, all your holes are hand laminated. Hand laminated. We don't do any infusion. We understand this, right? We have 850 boats on the water. Uh, we've never replaced the hull. We've never had a warranty replacement of a hull. We've never had a delamination issue. We've never had a structural issue. Uh, we, we service used owners, right? I still get calls from fourth and fifth owners asking for help with parts. Mm -hmm. Hand laminated the way that we've always done it. Okay. And I can ensure that 20 years from now, she's still going to be on the water. Okay. How long would this mold, how, how long will this be in the mold? We have boats in the molds four to six weeks. Four to six weeks? Four to six weeks. Really? Why so long? Part of it is that we ensure the curing process, right? So as the guys are handling the layers, we want them to dry, we want them to cure properly. Secondly, Kevlar has a longer drying process. So it extends the build time. Our production schedule is limiting how often we can turn the molds. And in turn, it's limiting how many boats we can build annually, which is fine with us. Yeah. We're not trying to mass produce boats. We're trying to build the strongest boat on the water. Okay. This is how we do it. Okay. So this one, uh, and then we, we got another cat here, right? And then this the, is the 39B bottom. No, no chop. On no any, chop. We don't own a chopper gun. No all chopper gun. All, all hand laminated. You can see the guys are in this boat. They're laying tabs and, and stringers and everything's being hand laminated. Everything's being, they're pushing resin, right? We call it pushing resin. Okay. They are in there pushing resin throughout this entire boat. And then I see right now it's at the fiberglass stage. It doesn't even have right, now the Kevlar. Now we've got the skin coat covering everything. All of our coring, because I will go over to the coring here coring shortly. Too. So we core the entire boat, hull sides, hull bottom, except for the bilge area. Um, we core the boxes, we core the deck. And what the does the coring do? Adds rigidity, adds structural, uh, it makes it more solid without adding too much weight, but it also adds uh, buoyancy and, and buoyancy. And, right? and that's what kind of makes it unsinkable, right? Right. Uh, listen. I always say, listen, I don't think there's anything ever un unsinkable, especially after the Titanic, but, but you guys are, are building uh, an amazing boat. Right. So what do we got going on here? This is a monohull. So this is a 35 foot monohull, right? So and we it's build, still in the mold. Uh, it's and, got all the bulkheads, everything ready. Right. So we ensure, again, we want to make sure Stringers. that she's cured. We want to make sure that she's true. We want to make sure that everything is right before we pull it out. We're in no hurry, we're in no rush to pull these out until they're ready to be pulled out. Do you so, have anything being skinned, like the first layer, let's, anything? Let's go this way and we'll look at a skinning process. So this is a 33 footer. This boat actually belongs to a really good friend of mine. Alex, if you're watching this, this is your boat. Is. All right. He's, he's going to have to pay more for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, we'll, we'll give Alex, him a you got to hook me up, dude. <laughs> Listen, and Alex is a big baller, right? Alex wants everybody to see his boat. So here she is from the beginning. Today's day one. So oh. they're, they're putting the skin coat down. You can see they're rolling it. Everything, you know, tedious, time consuming. But definitely, I'm going to be able to ensure when this boat is done that it's as strong as any boat we've ever built. So the 33 is, is one of the boats that are in your lineup. Yeah. That's kind of like one of the smaller boats at this point, right? Well, look at the size of the 33 footer. I know, right? I know. This is massive. But I'm saying like compared to where, where you guys have gone here, right. you got a 45 monohull, you got a, you got a 46 cat. Yeah. We All right. So 
where are you guys uh, spraying the gel coat? So everything gets sprayed here. Everything. Everything gets sprayed here. So so gel coat would would have been the first process. Right. The, the 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 gel coat goes first, and then the skin coat, and then layers of fiberglass and Kevlar, and then you see here how we have coring. Right. So on this, we've just covered the coring. Now, do you have anything, any coring there loose so we can show yeah, them? Yeah, we'll look at that also. Alfred, I want you to look at this. When people ask how much Kevlar do we use, right? This is the, this is, this is the cap, right? It's probably one of the catamaran caps. Look at the amount of Kevlar that we're laying on this cap, right? We're trying to ensure that this cap is strong. We're trying to ensure that it doesn't break. Uh, we're trying to ensure that it doesn't get stress cracking. We're trying to ensure that this part is as strong as the other two parts. So, so guys, so you mean to tell me that a guy like me, 6'5", 225 ripped could run through these gunnels and not have a problem? When you find that 6'5 guy that's ripped, <laughs> you let me know, and we'll have him run. <laughs> Listen, what do you mean when we find that when guy? When we find that guy. Listen, All right. as a factory, I think that we throw away more Kevlar than most manufacturers use. All right, let's go look at the coring. So people ask about our coring, right? So this is the core cell that we use. Closed cell, extremely hey, expensive. Explain, explain because somebody who's gonna spend the amount of money on a boat like this, explain why you wanna use this. Right, so Compared to make a, maybe a boat that's in the 90s, right. right? So so originally we started using coring because when you built the original boats in Kevlar, mm -hmm. they were loud. Kevlar dries very tight, it's almost like a drum you tighten the skin down, mm -hmm. and as it hits the water, it was loud. So when you yeah. want to quiet the boats down, we put coring in there. But what the coring also does is it adds rigidity. The hulls are very quiet in the water. Some people call that slap. Right. Or, or, and buoyancy, flotation. So it's a, it's a combination that we wanted to use in our boats, right? We wanted all of that. So your transom. Tell transom. me about that. Didn't you show me a part right. that had some thickness to it this way because I, I want to kind of show be, because here's the thing right you know it seems like we're pushing these boats even more to the limit now mercury has a 600 horsepower um mercury we're pouring the hard top so this is a, this is a, a whole hard top so even even up there right so what so, so is, right when we're mounting when we're mounting lights we're mounting radars we're mounting or people stand have you ever seen 20 people standing on a hard top jumping in the water we want the hard top to be as strong as the other and ones. not flex and break right. so you you'll 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 sandwich these together you'll sandwich that, these listen, together the six five rip guy when you meet him Okay. He can come stand on the hard top and jump and you'll see no flex. Oh, okay, so there won't be any flex, which, right. is, which is important, right? right? Because when you're going out on, on rough situations or, or far journeys right. or, or voyages, you want to make sure when things get dicey, things are not going to just uh, disintegrate on you. Let me, right. find, let me find the transom parts. I think, I think we also just stumbled across Kent City. Yeah. So, is it? Oof. Alfred, this is okay. the thickness of our transoms, right? These are the boards that we use in preparation of our transoms. These get laminated, so when, when we put a transom in a boat, okay. it's meant to never come out and never flex and never break. Unlimited horsepower was our idea. Eventually, horsepower changes. Eventually, three powers happen, and we want it to be ready for them. So there, that, that must weigh there a couple. Yeah, it's probably 50 pounds. All right. Now, regrettably, we don't have the best day to film out here because we just got one of those South Florida rain. Right. But this is now, uh, well, listen, I see Tent City right now. Right. What, what I, knowing the little bit I know about Ralph, I kind of see this area at some point also 
being constructed maybe in the future when you guys are selling a thousand boats? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, a thousand boats require uh, an army of workers to maintain them and to build them. And I think I think everybody knows that right now. A couple less days at the boat listen, ramp. Don't worry, listen, Eddie. Right, you can do right it. Right now, right now, it's hard to staff. It is. So so we're happy at our size. We are. We listen, there's companies out there that build 2,500 boats a year. We want to be between 50 and 100 and just build good quality boats with good quality clients. And, and keep the rela the relationship sales that we're doing. So so the important part is that we're still building parts as if we want them to last forever, right? So here are all of our boxes that are coming out of this area here. And they're being prepped here to be trimmed, right? We do all of our trimming here. So your trimming done here at Tent right. City for now, right? And that's going to be done indoors now. That's going to move into this main facility, in, into a new facility right. we just walked. So everything's cored, right? All my all my fish boxes, the tub for the console. Uh, th that's a large fish box, forward fish box on a catamaran. Everything's cored, everything's solid, el everything's ultra laminated so that you could stand inside. And I'm going to have you do this, right? So when you go for the sea trial okay. on the catamaran, I want you to get inside of a fish box and jump up and down and tell me how much flex it has. I'm, and, weighing, one, and I'm find, weighing 150 now, dude. Find, I'm weighing 155. Find the 6'5 rip guy <laughs> and we'll have him jump in it too. Okay, look, here's a, a deck that just came out. So I see that there's last names on these. Are yes. these people who are working on it or are these customers? Those are the customer names. So Escobar right now is going to be happy so as Mr. hell. So Eddie Escobar, there's his 28. So so you already know his name just by looking at the last name. Right. Eddie, your boat's coming soon. All right, here's... What is all that? What do you see there? That's a lot of Kevlar. A lot of Kevlar. This okay, is, so this is, this is this the, floor. The, this the liner. The the, yeah. the, okay. So, so this this will go into the hole, right? And then you put the cap. So you saw the amount of Kevlar we used in the hull. You saw the amount of Kevlar we used on the cap, and now you see how much we're using on the deck. These are three pieces. That this are is meant. this is why. Yeah, this, this is, is this is why people depend on us. We want safety. This is safe. Okay? And this is when you go out of hull over. This is why this you is guys can slam it because people have the confidence that these boats. Okay, so. Molds here. Molds here. We, we pull molds because of our space constraints and because these boats have gotten so big, we are pulling molds in and out of that uh, space that we just walked through, which again, delays production, right? So if I need to put a cap mold in and I need to uh, take out another cap mold so that I have, you know, I'm building a cap for a 39 and I pulled out the 35 and so on and so forth, that takes time, right? Every, everything is, is time consuming with with our original setup right so all these molds will now be indoors and ready to go when i need them so maybe somebody that doesn't know right because there's a lot of people that watch my channel that maybe i stumbled across the video right. this will be the mold you'll spray right the color. gel coat well first you put wax yeah you will put right. a wax you put wax so that it pops off then you put the color then you put a skin coat which is a very light coat so you don't well, see print through right that mm -hmm. skin coat is nice and and it's just smooth. It's a very light fiberglass. And then we go into our more aggressive materials, our, our stronger fiberglass and stronger Kevlar. Wow, and look at this. There's, there's so many boats here waiting. So, so the challenge is parts. The challenge so is parts. You, so you'll have, you'll, have you'll have a scenario right now that you can't do something for someone's boat because you can't get certain parts for it. So you have to jump to something else. Right. Wow. That, that, that must be a production chit show for real. Yeah. Um, and kudos, listen, kudos to my guys because they've been able to go with the flow, right? As things become in, uh, unavailable and then all of a sudden there's availability in other items, we've been able to, to navigate the stormy waters, right? Like let's, let's use it, nautical terminology. It's been stormy waters for the last two or three years and we've been able to find our way through and continue to build exactly what we've always built. What massive monster is this over here? This looks like a 46. This is a, a 38. A 38. Yep. And look how big that thing looks. So now, dude, there's even more tents back there. Right. So this is, this is going to turn into our service area here. Once we get everything moved, we've got the tents available. Then we'll be staffing, you know, probably let's say six to seven mechanics here full time so that we have 
service here in Miami and service in Key Largo. What, what hall is this right here? This is a 31. A 31. Mm -hmm. This is a nice looking boat too. So, so, so these smaller boats, traditionally back in the days, a 30 foot boat was like all you needed. Right. But you know, Listen, Alfred, my, my demand for 31 footers right now, I could stop production and only build 31s mm -hmm. and we'd be busy for the next three years. Yeah. But because I have to make a decision on what to do and what to build, the 31 has suffered a little bit. All right. So. All right. What, what, uh, so this is already, it's here. It's here. Waiting to get trimmed. Waiting to get trimmed. Waiting to get trimmed. As soon as they trim it, they can move it inside the shop. It's you know, inside the shop. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go inside now too, because I'm going to go talk to Chris. Okay. All right. So we made it, we made it to the final, final. And now we have Captain Chris that you're going to pass the baton to, guys. Right. And, okay, so we came back to the door of this 46. This is the Thursday 46. Right. This okay. is your Thursday ride. If you show up. Well, well, okay, guys. We got to, we... It, you, it, you say a lot and then what you do or what you say. No, no listen. <laughs> this Thursday, well, we're going to give him an actual date because, you know, it wasn't this Thursday. It was next Thursday. Right. And then right. next Thursday is five years. All right, I'm gonna hold them. Look, you know what I do? You know what I do? Always just to put people out there. It's gonna happen Thursday. It's gonna happen Thursday. Bring it out. Oh, Look at yo. it. It's gonna happen. That's it. <laughs> He's not hey, gonna. Guys, so you know, Alfred's wrist is this big from holding that camera. No lie. No lie. All right. All right. So, Chris, you're gonna hand it off now to Chris. Chris does QC and. The dolphin is Captain Chris. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> you heard of Captain Crunch? This is Captain Chris. And I, you listen, you can tell, you can tell he's got the whole sunblock right, thing. Right. So, Chris, what are you are gonna, what are you gonna show me now? All right. So, pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a quick walkthrough through what we would do with our customers when the boat is at post production QC, which is where I usually take over and I start handling the boats and I'm really hands on with the boat with our production team and then also the customers. So why don't we take a walk to the back, let's get in the boat, and then we'll just move forward from there. Eddie, thank you. And uh, what an amazing- I'll, I'll see you Thursday. Thursday, yeah. it's gonna happen, guys. Don't wear your Speedo. Rain or oh! <laughs> Don't wear the Speedo! <laughs> Whoa, what if I, I got a little red one at home, bro. Hey, right. just make sure you bring your jacket, your rain jacket. All right, so this is our 46 with quad 425s. Um, which are a hot commodity right now, so I'm happy that we have them and we'll be able to put them on this boat. So I'm gonna go up, you guys can follow me. Guys, 46 feet of amazingness. All right, so first things first, this has quickly become the flagship. This is the flagship model of our company right now. Wow, yeah. so first of all, I, I'm glad you guys are letting me film this right before we're going to completely go on it, right? Yep. Come so, on in, man. Just watch your step. Just be careful. Yeah, guys. There's still some work going on here. Yeah. So right now I'm in the transom. It will be the splash well of the boat. All right. So welcome to Sea Hunter, the 46. Yeah. So welcome aboard our 46 CTS. Okay. So where I'm standing here is the cockpit area of the boat. And normally what I'm doing now is I'm going, opening up all our hatches, I'm checking to make sure that all our valves, everything are working and are ready to go to the water and make sure everything's nice and tight and we're not gonna have any water spillage into the boat itself. Um, and then, you know, just moving forward from there, you know, you're, you're sitting here, you're looking at our, uh, our drink cooler, which is like a little mini pool, as you can see. Well, look, they're gonna they're gonna see the walkthrough per se of it completely finished right right because what i want to capture chris is right now somebody's going to get the boat all of a sudden you're going to be the guy who's going to teach them how to use their boat right they're excited they already have a date come meet me here we're going to go we're going to so how long do you stay with them okay so normally what will happen is once we have ran our boat 
uh, multiple times, we usually try to put about 10 hours on our boats prior to the customer getting the boat. And the reason being is we're trying to catch any type of issue, uh, an electrical issue, anything that could come up, we're trying to catch it before it gets to our customers. So about mm -hmm. 10 hours we try to put on the boat. Once we do that, we're gonna put the boat in the water, we're gonna schedule it with a customer. They're gonna come in and they're actually gonna take delivery of the boat. That day, we're gonna spend somewhere between four to six to maybe even eight hours, depending on what size boat they have, mm -hmm. on the water with them, teaching them all of their systems, how to use their pumps, uh, whatever options they put on the boat, this, even down just basic to the stereo system. We're gonna spend that day with them, get them dialed in, answer as many questions as possible. So you guys protect this here so nothing falls on all the electronics? Yeah, nothing working. falls in also just security-wise since we already have our full electronics package put in. Okay. Just overnight, just to protect it, just that little bit more. We put this uh, it's like safety cover, got a big cable on it, just make it that much more difficult. For Let's walk to, to the bow it. a little bit and, uh, you know, so I just, because I want to make sure that the people know also Welcome that, to the dance floor. Yeah, this is where the party's at. Listen, I'm 6'5", 225, oh, ripped. Yeah. And uh, so this is it. This is where it all happens. Yeah. Now, once once on Thursday, once I do a C trial. If, I, if we can make it happen, you know? Nah, he, know. Shook on, he shook on it already. <laughs> he shook on it. Don't play with me, man. He shook on it. All right, so little couple things and then after that sea trial doesn't necessarily mean that it's ready for the boat owner to see the boat yet. So yeah, you know, those those initial sea trials that we do and that we're trying to put 10 hours on, like I said, we're trying to get to the point where this boat is turnkey, there's no issues. I have found literally any type of anything that would bother you spending the amount of money that our customers are spending on these boats. So that when you do receive your boat, it's literally push a button, fire it up, untie, and go have fun. All right, so, it, it, listen, it's it's been an it's an amazing tour, um, Chris. You're gonna want to watch this video. Okay, <laughs> listen. I'm gonna be on it. Hopefully. <laughs> so so Chris, how long have you been working with Sea So on and off, I've been doing work for the company for about seven or eight years. Um, and you're a captain yourself because I filmed yeah. you. I tried to get yeah. you on the chit show. <laughs> you didn't get me, sucker. <laughs> uh, no, yes. no, you didn't because you were on a 38, I think. Yeah, I was actually launching a 39 out of Black Point Marina, which is our home. Home marina where we spend a lot of time at the ramp there launching our boats three miles three miles that's it guys no pools over here yeah <laughs> <laughs> listen um so what what has you excited about the new facility and how is that going to help your job yeah so my job first of all now i won't be outdoors um like today we're having a rainy day when I'm going through my, my final QC check before hitching the boat up and taking it to the water, I'm going through all our systems and making sure that we're not gonna have any water intrusion into the boat before launching it. I get to do that now indoors rather than being outside in the heat, in the sun. The other thing too is our production quality is gonna go through the seating because all of our guys are gonna be so happy to be indoors, under AC, under a uh, vent, and no rain. All right, so I'm, I'm excited about doing the sea trial. What should I expect when I get on this boat? This is the baddest ride in uh, Catamaran in town. I'll tell you what, um, you're gonna really enjoy the ride. Um, biggest thing is stability. Um, the, the, ride, the, the ride quality is extremely impressive. I just spent uh, 10 days in the Bahamas with Ralph, marlin fishing, tuna fishing, diving. Ralph, Ralph being the owner. Ralph, yeah, Ralph being the owner of the company. And you know, in those 10 and days- And he's a big fisherman. And he uses this. That's all we do. That, but, but, but listen, that's what he, because I, I talked to Ralph. Yeah. And I asked him, well, what are you fishing? And he goes, a 46. That's it, man. Like nonchalant, I'm here thinking he's like in a massive, he goes, no. Nah. He goes, right I'm here. in my 46. Yeah. Loving life. We're spending 10 to 12 hours a day fishing in the Bahamas, you know, leaving at 8 in the morning and we're not back to the dock till 9 p.m. And every day you're feeling fresh. You're ready to go for the next day. And that's what we, this boat provides the ability to do. What's the biggest question? Somebody just bought a Sea Hunter. You're, you're ready to go ahead and do the sea trial questions. What are some of the questions that you normally get asked the most? Because you're basically the last guy they see. Yeah, so um, a lot of the questions that we're having uh, you know, regarding our boats is why are we one of the driest boats out there? We're one of the driest boats out there because of the bow that we have in these boats, the amount of flare that we have, the sharp entry into the boat, into the water. That sets us apart. I, I've never seen I've never seen a Sea Hunter get stuffed that hollow. You won't see it. 
I've uh, I have over a thousand miles navigated on these sea hunters all the way from New York City down to uh, down to the Caribbean. I've never stuffed about. What's your favorite sea hunter? All of them. Ah! Spoken like a true. Are you gonna be in sales now or what? Hey, come see me. I'll be. I'll buy you. I'll sell you your boat. <laughs> all right. Well, listen up. I want to thank the team here at uh, Sea Hunter. Let me see if I can get myself into the shot, guys. Maybe look. I'll plug He's here. I'll, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna get you the chicha one day. Let's go, man. Listen. You ain't gonna get me. I'm too good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So where can they go online to get more information? All right. So at, on Instagram, you go to at Sea Hunter Boats, and then uh, on our website, just go to SeaHunterBoats.com. How hard is it for me to get the shot holding this with one hand? I tell you what, bro. You got some massive shoulders, dude. Boom! <laughs> <laughs>